Jadavian Clowney. How does the Yannick Ngakwe trade affect him? Now, let's put this in perspective. Clowney made $15 million last year from the Seahawks. Technically, eight from the Seahawks and seven from the Texans, but he made $15 million. He hasn't gotten offered much more than $15 million on a one-year deal on the open market. He presumably wants 20 or more. Yannick Ngakwe gets 12 from the Vikings, plus they give up a second-round pick next year and a five that could become a three in 2022. What do you do? How do you value Clowney in relation to what Ngakwe got? Between the two guys, let's start there. Who do you want, Chris, between Jadevian Clowney or Yannick Ngakwe, assuming that Clowney is healthy? Uh, Which that, guy do you want? That's not even close. That's not even close to me. You know, again, this is where sacks are overrated, uh, disruption, F the play up, physical mismatch. Offense has to change what they want to do on the offensive side of the ball. Clowney causes all those problems. Yannick Ngakwe has got a great first step and can fly around the edge. But after that, I'd go, there's some other issues with this game. He's 247 seven pounds, you know, and I think he's got to eat to, like, stay that way. So he can't take double teams on. He's not great in the run game. It's clowny all the way for me, Michael. Okay, so he, here's the reality. When it, Because a trade is always done in relation to what you have to give up by way of draft picks or players, what's that value, yep. and what you have to pay the player. Yeah. So now setting aside that aberration from several years ago when the Browns bought a second-round pick by taking on – Brock Osweiler's $16 million fully guaranteed contract, and they ultimately ended up paying 15 because he went back to Denver for a million dollars after the Browns cut him. So they, they paid $15 million for a second-round pick. That's an aberration. Someone told me last night that, roughly speaking, second-round pick is worth $8 million. So the Vikings, when you take the 12 plus the value of the second-round pick, and let's not even – try to put a number on the 2022 pick, although that's justified, it's $20 million for Ngakwe. So if it's $20 million for Ngakwe, what's Clowney worth? What should he want? This proves, Chris, that he's justified in wanting $20 million or more. If you regard him, and I do too, he's healthy, he's, he's the guy who can F the play up over and over again right. without ever getting a sack completely destroy the offensive line, blow gaping holes in it like a torpedo into the hull of a destroyer. That's what you're paying for. And if you're going to pay 12 plus a second-round pick, if we attach a value of eight to it, for a one-trick pony, all due respect, you're paying more than 20 for Jadavian Clowney. Aren't you? No, you, you are. I, I mean, I guess where I want to just question your math a little bit is like, yeah, but you're getting that $8 million off the books, or you don't have to pay it either. So you have, I think you have to take what that. Do you in mean? A, well, what do you mean you're getting $8 million the, off the Vikings the books? don't have to pay $8 million no, to a second no, rounder. No, 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 no. It's not, no. I know no. the value of the, the player. Value, yes, the I value you. of I the pick. You. Right. The value of the pick. If we, if we say, what is it? If you want to buy a second round pick for a team, what would you buy it for? Gotcha. You buy it for $8 million. Gotcha. I'm not talking about the value of the contract because it's actually less than that. Yeah. I'm talking about what a second round pick is worth in dollars and cents. So if we try to mash those together, because yeah. I, I look at it this way, and, and we're probably never going to know this, um, but if I'm the Vikings, and maybe we will know it. Maybe it's something, maybe if there was only somebody who was a reporter that was part of this program who could go try to find stuff like this out. But. If I'm the Vikings, am I not – number one, I want to improve my pass rush, okay? So who's out there? Well, I can trade for Yannick Ngakwe or I can sign Jadavian Clowney. Well, I'd like to think that before giving up a second-round pick plus another pick plus $12 million for Ngakwe, I'd like to think I'm talking to Clowney. I'd like to think I'm at least finding out what Clowney wants, right? Yeah. You'd be stupid to not do that. The so – um. The problem I, is, just, what is he asking for? What is it like? I mean, he probably wants more than a okay. one-year deal. Would you give him twenty? Would Would you get if you would give? And I don't know that you would give Ngakwe twelve plus a second-round pick plus more to get him. But assuming that you would do that, would you rather just play pay twenty to Clowney and be done with it? I don't know if I would. Not in this current environment. I don't. I'm not sure. And, you know, the other thing we have to bring up is that there is an injury risk with Mujadevian Khan. I mean, that's a real – I don't know. We assume I know. he's healthy. I know. But it's a but real factor. But even if he's healthy, there's a risk. Yeah. I mean, it just – to me, that lowers his price tag to a degree. So, yeah, Jadevian, you might be the player that's worth $20 million, 
But with your injury history to me, that knocks a few million dollars off of it. You know, yeah, you were awesome last year, but in half the year. So, I mean, what, what are we supposed to do there? Plus, we know, like we've talked about before, Mike, he's had microfracture surgery on his knee. That's about as bad as it gets for an NFL football player. You always are a little skeptical, skeptical about, ooh, when will that kind of run its course and really affect his career to where he can't be the same guy there? So, yeah, the player, this, this is where it's really tricky with him because the player itself is worthy of being a $21, $22 million a year type guy. But there is injury history, and now there's the COVID-19 pandemic and, of course, the salary cap adjustments and all that. So I don't know. I don't think I probably would pay $20 million for Devion Clowney right now. Well, um, it's an interesting question. It is. I'm going to start trying to poke around to see, you know, how to turn that into dollars and cents and what does it mean for Clowney. And, you know, maybe Clowney is just waiting until we get to the first week of the regular season. He might be. And, and he'll take the best deal that's available. Hey, he's avoided all of training camp. He's avoided the offseason program. So did everyone else. But a lot of times a veteran player wants to do that. Doesn't yeah. want to mess around with it. He knows what he can do. He knows how to get himself in shape. And he'll be ready to go. And uh, uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting question now to see if someone makes a run at Clowney and what he ultimately would get. Because you could argue that the Vikings are basically – if we turn it all into dollars, going more than $20 million for one year with Yannick Ngakwe. And, and if that's the case, if that's the case, uh, if I'm going to if I'm gonna write a check for $20 million between Ngakwe and Clowney, I'd probably rather have Clowney. I probably would. Yeah, me too. I hate too. to say that. I think so. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I guess the other, you know, yeah, the question is, is just who's that team that's going to pony up enough money to want a, want a Jadeveon Clowney? And that's where I just look at it and think it's interesting. You know, there, there's some teams there that certainly have positional needs at the top of like salary cap and what, you know, what they have available. Hey, there are the Patriots there. We've heard the Cleveland Browns flirt with it. I think that ship sailed and gone. Now the jets have a need there at the position. You know, it doesn't sound like they're going to go there. We know Washington or the Denver Broncos. They're good in that position. The dolphins, you know, do they want to flirt with that? I mean, there's some teams out there you look at and go, oh, it makes sense. The Tennessee Titans with the Vic Beasley situation, they have they've some... been they've been linked to him. Yeah, they've been linked so to him. So I could see that the three four defense, and of course, Jadavion Clowney played in Houston, which is the same scheme as New England and in Tennessee. Let me try one more hypothetical. Yeah, and I know this is going to be hard to do because we can't forget what we already know. Pretend it's Sunday morning, and the text that you get from me isn't. Vikings trade for Yannick Ngakwe. Pretend that the text is Vikings sign Jadavian Clowney. What's your reaction? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going, whoa, holy cow, game changer on defense. I mean, there's just so many things. Yannick Ngakwe wants to line up three feet outside the offensive tackle and, like we said, speed rush. Jadavian Clowney is like the jack of all trades. You can line him up at D tackle, and he could run over Quentin Nelson. You can line him up at defense end, and he'll run over Trent Williams. You can play him at linebacker and let him walk around and just pick where he wants to blitz and be a rover and just do crazy crap. He has unbelievable position versatility. Yes, I would have been more excited for your Minnesota Vikings if they got clowny. Yes, I would have. Sorry. Well, doesn't that answer the question? Maybe I should have started there. Yeah, maybe that you answers have. the question. That answers the question. So we'll see what happens with Clowney. We are 10 days away from the first game. Texans Chiefs, 13 away from the first full weekend of the regular season and two weeks away from that doubleheader that will cap week one, Steelers and Giants and Titans and Broncos. It's here. It, it is here and it is going to happen. And I can't wait, Chris, and we're going to have you covered every step of the way at ProFootballTalk.com, PFT Live. Do we have an unbutton coming up today? Yep, you know it. We're going to break down some uh, AFC over-unders as far as what we're expecting there, break down some uh, other news going on in the NFL. And I think we're even going to do some videos of, like, some ideas of what New England might do with Cam Newton on the offensive side of the ball and kind of show some, uh, you know, some some – whiteboard pictures of of some plays they might run with him and his talents there. Well, Bill Belichick met with the media today and he declined to say who the starting quarterback is as if anyone is guessing at this point who it will be. All right. We'll see you tomorrow on Peacock for PFT live. Check out the digital clips on profootballtalk.com. The podcast is available. Sorry. We won't be on NBCSN for a few weeks, but you will find us anywhere and everywhere. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Everybody have a great day. See ya.
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.